everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I need to repot two of my Master Valleyers and I wanted to take you along and explain a little bit about how I care for Master Valleyers in warm environments. Uh, I've got a few different Master Valleyers and I started with them about six months ago. So I bought them back in the beginning of January and so I've had them for about six months. I've tried a few different setups and I'm switching today my Master Valleyers that are in moss to a mix of Ceramis and Lekka because for me this seems to be what's working really well for them and I can't explain why it seems to be working better than moss other than maybe the clay media is just cooling their root zone that little bit better than the moss is. They've all been in self-watering pots and they've all had a clay outer or clay or ceramic outer pot except for the Masteralia glandulosa which I switched to Ceramis in a self-watering pot because it was drying out too quickly. And that seems to have made all the difference. I was really struggling with the glandulosa. It was yellowing and I was getting leaf tip dieback. I think that was a stress response to the heat because it was getting correct nutrients and the same sort of watering regime as all my other Masteralias and it was never drying out. But yeah, I switched it to the Ceramis mix and all the leaves actually went back from yellow to being green and the leaf tip dieback stopped. I did lose a couple of leaves and I've got a couple of patches like on the underside of this leaf. The actual top of the leaf though is, is fine. So yeah, I, I think it's a bit inevitable when you're growing them in warm environments to get this kind of issue. But it seems I can mitigate this a bit by using the Ceramis mix. Now, this Masteralia glandulosa experiment was purely kind of my observations and it seems to be doing better since I switched it to Ceramis. But what I did after realising that a lot of my Master Valleys were doing better in Ceramis, and I'll show you one example which I can actually show you, which is my Master Valleya Parlatoriana. And that one, the root growth on it is just really good. And this didn't have that many roots when I first got it. You can see it's got a lot of new growth. Uh, it's got a really nice moss layer on the top of the pot there, which I am cultivating. So the ceramis is providing quite an ideal environment for the moss. So that's already a good indicator that the environment is potentially suited to Master Valleyers because the, they would kind of require the same sort of care as moss, low fertilizing and moist at all times a low dissolved solute count of the water and a cooler environment. This is my kind of more technical experiment where after noticing that the Master Valleyers were doing better in the Ceramis and Lacquer mix in self-watering or semi-hydro, I purchased from Burnham Nurseries two divisions and I checked and these are from the same mother plant of Master Valleya Paviana. Now, this one's been a bit tricky for me. It hasn't really liked my environment at all. And to start with, I was getting a lot of leaf crinkling, as you can see. But when I got them, they were a very comparable size, pretty much identical. And so I potted one in sphagnum moss in a self-watering pot, which is this one. And then one in the Ceramis Lecker mix, which is this one. And you can see I've got some really nice root growth in the Ceramis Lecker mix. It seems to be doing really well. Um, it had some, seems to have had some issues adjusting to my environment. But now that it is adjusted, I'm getting new growths that aren't crinkled. To start with, this one really hated me. All these new growths were just coming through completely crinkled to the point that they were actually dying before they get out because they were like... I don't know what was happening, but within the sheaths, because they were so crinkled, they weren't escaping and then they just seemed to be rotting away. And this happened for both of them, both of the divisions when I first got them. But yeah, you can see this, this growth is quite twisted where it's tried to escape from its sheath and it has eventually managed to come out. But the new ones are coming through absolutely fine. Like they were crinkling already at this stage before. So I think now that it's got a decent root system down into the ceramis, can see all those new growths there, new roots coming out there. It seems to be doing a lot better. And this one in the moss is not doing so great at all. Look at it. Um, so I think that kind of 
makes my decision a little bit clearer. This is what I was talking about with the crinkling within the sheaths. You can see. Just super crinkled. So I'm gonna switch this one to Ceramis. I'm gonna pull it out of the experiment early and see how it does in Ceramis because I'm not happy with how this is going. And we'll have a look at the root system. I'm not gonna get the one that's in Ceramis out because we can see that it has a good root system through the pot. And I think we can kind of tell from the fact that I think we can tell from the fact that there's moss growing on top of the pot there. And just the overall condition of the plant that it does seem to be doing better in the ceramis mix. I don't know how this is going to go long term. Uh, keep your fingers crossed for me. And now another reason why I urgently need to repot this one in moss is we have fungus gnat larvae. And they are disgusting and I hate them. I didn't have a carnivorous plant downstairs where I keep them. Can you see all the webbing? That is fungus gnat larvae. And I can't really focus on them, they're so tiny. See if I can pick one off and show you. If you are unfamiliar with fungus gnat larvae, then you are about to gross, see what they look like. Really disgusting, aren't they? I mean, this orchid needed repotting urgently anyway, just from that issue alone, because they can munch on roots, I believe. And I hate them. Um, but just with how badly it's doing as well, I thought we could get it out of the pot and have a look at the root system. And I also would like to repot this one, which is Mastavalia Schroederiana, into Ceramis, because it's been growing very slowly in moss, and I just, I just want to see how it does. Um, I'm all for trying new things and new methods and I'm always looking to improve my setup. So we will give it a try and I can let you know the results. I think eventually I would really like to switch to full self-watering setups for all of my master values. Okay, so I can already see that we do have good roots. So the moss is doing its job in that respect and it's keeping everything nice and moist. So the only thing that I can think of with the ceramis is that it's just keeping the root zone that bit cooler because it's clay media. And I would never want to try a Mastavalia in Lekka because Lekka is such a dry environment in terms of the dry top layer and the airiness of the mix. And I just think Mastavalias would hate that. But ceramis is much more like sphagnum moss and I wouldn't use it for most of my orchids. I thought I'd try it with these guys and it seems to be working really well. So this Master Valley has been in this moss it makes about six months. So the actual moss is fine. It doesn't need changing. It's not the reason for this repot. And they didn't really have root systems when I got them, which I was a little bit surprised at. And I think that's possibly why they were so cheap because they were very small divisions without much of a root system. These were from Burnham Nurseries, by the way, and Burnham's really good for just cheap divisions of Mastavalias. They um, they have a lot, a large variety. So I'm actually going to use a slightly different ceramic pot for this one, just because the root system's a bit bigger than I was expecting. Lecker at the bottom to stop the small ceramics escaping. This pot might look a bit large, but the other pot was a little bit too small, and I'm a bit limited for sizes with my uh, self-watering semi-hydro type pots. So in this context, all the lecker is doing is just making the ceramics go a bit further and prevent, potentially uh, providing a few more air pockets. So that is the repot into ceramics and lecker mix all done. That's what the kind of ratio looks like. And I'm just gonna pop some sphagnum moss on the top there, which will just help to keep the top layer of roots nice and moist while they adjust. What I will do eventually is try and cultivate a layer of actual moss on the top because I think the actual moss on the top looks so much nicer than the dead sphagnum. It just helps to keep the 
moisture levels on the top there, nice and high. Although the ceramis does stay very moist at the top layer, it's just those roots that aren't in the ceramis that I'm concerned about. So just pop some moss on there. Hopefully this one will do better and I will keep you updated. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye!